Okay, I guess we'll call this r and r the cylinder head in your old Chevy van. Continuation of my first video of changing the camshaft. Seems that I ran into additional problems. I could not seal the leak up front on the timing cover. Had it apart three times. It seemed as if it was actually blowing the oil out. And that's when I uh, determined I had blow-by in my engine. And I realized that I had more problems than just the flat cam. So, I found number four when I did my compression test. 50 pounds in cylinder number four. So, from my determination, it's the cylinder head and there's a story behind that which I won't get into at the moment, but it means I gotta tear the top end down again, even further. I already covered all this in the camshaft section in my previous video, so I won't delve on all of that. However, I will have to unhook my headers, and yes, I do have headers, and a performer manifold and holly carburetor on my old van. It adds lots of power and gas mileage, both, when she's running right. Okay, I've been moving, removing all the cylinder head bolts from the outward in, like in a spiral. You start in the edges, you work your way into the center. Here's the center bolt. Now, most of my push rods are still hooked up. Let's see. Uh, it's hard to do this one handed. Uh. So, with the push rods, most of them still hooked up into the rocker arms. Sometimes they will help to push the head up off the block, which makes it easier. Or disassembly. Ah, it's coming loose. See some of the water's coming out. I've drained the, the lower radiator hose, but that won't remove all the water from the block. We get a little water in the back. Okay, this seal on the head has been broken, so it shouldn't take a lot to lift the head off. And then, of course, we have to get it, maneuver it out of this van. Head's loose. All right, let's lift it off out of here. Ah, I, <laughs> I have my alternator still hooked in the end bolt. Okay, time out. Commercial break. All right, I have a few things in the way here in the van. Oh, here we have something else hooked up. I had a vacuum modulator line bracket in the way. Dipstick tube here was right in front of the bolt. Couldn't get the bolt out. Now these push rods all have to come out of here. Let's see. Get all these things out. Make this job a whole lot easier. Right now to get it around this, see if I can maneuver the head around this dipstick tube here somehow. somehow. Uh, get it out of here somehow. I go and knock the camera down as I'm breaking my back, pulling that cylinder head out of here. All right, here we are. So we have, as you can see, number eight, six and fours are labeled. If we look at this one, for instance, we can see there's black carbon deposits all the way around the top of the piston head. That's what we want to see. Same way. I'm looking out for a washed out area around the edge of my bad hole here. It's all wet with oil to see if it's all cleaned off around the edges because that's what rings will cause. It will clean off all around the edges of the rings. It, it really it's hard to say it's so wet, but I don't see anything yet. We're going to have to take a look at the head now. Okay, we have the head off. I'm looking at the offending number four, my dead hole. And I notice on the exhaust valve here how it seems to be kind of cleaned off around the edge right there. I see some shininess compared to this one right there on the edge. Makes me wonder, is that thing moving around, that valve stem? 
going to try an old trick here to get it off. Let's get a socket on that thing and give it a whack. There's one. That was not coming out so easy. It's really quick. Ah, boy. Well, so much for that trick. All right, here's another trick. I keep this tool around for this sort of thing. Ah, oh, yeah. It's going to take some doing. Okay, I can get the torque wrench onto my old, my old torque wrench here. I'm number, my first rod bolt, number two. We're going to check the breakaway torque on the old torque wrench. There it is, right at 45. We'll get all four of these off now. Getting these rod caps off is a real hassle. Some say don't do this, but here's one way. I'm using screwdrivers and everything else. But uh, up in there, carefully and gently. Try not to run off the edge of the bolt. Okay, days and days of work have gone by and I'm still working on this old van. Putting way more work into it than should be. Don't know if you can see that piece of plastic gauge right there. This is my second attempt. Last Friday I tried before giving up in a rainstorm. It blew out of there or something. Normally I wouldn't put grease in here, but I want to hold it in place. Accuracy is not paramount here because tolerances are way off. I know it. Like I said, this engine was already overhauled once with rings and bearings back in uh, around 1990, early 1990s. 90s. So, uh, just trying to keep her going a little while longer. We're looking at bearings that uh, is probably the worst example of wear and dirt that's gone through the motor since then. All right, so we need to crawl underneath there and uh, see what we can do. It's a little bit wet today, but don't have much choice. Okay. Right smack in the middle. Oh yeah, what's that one say? Uh, one and a half foul, really? Wow. Actually, I'm impressed by that. I was expecting more clearance than that on that crankshaft. Uh, well, looking at it with the naked eye, right smack in the middle, it looks like about one and a half foul. Interestingly enough, this made me more like two thousands across over toward here. I'm measuring it right through the middle there. About one and a half. Well, no sooner have I checked this out, I uh, have a huge rainstorm blowing in. A little bit difficult to work. I'm starting to get surface rust on my crank throws underneath the van here. All right, here's my replacement piston and rod. My buddy sent me down to ERS out in Troutdale. I remembered that's the place to go. They got all the core motors out there. The guys went and found me one of these out of a standard bore 350. I took it back, mic'd it. It's exactly the same size. There's no collapse on the uh, piston skirts. Here's part of my summit order. I spent a couple hundred bucks with them. And uh, I've got uh, Clevite trimetal bearing in here for the rod bearing. 
These are my 30 over double molly rings. And I cut them down and set the clearances as a kind of a compromise because there's about four and a half thousand taper in that cylinder down there. So I need to get this set up and ready to shove inside there as the rain keeps falling down out here. It's now hit mid-October. We're getting into the wet weather. Okay, I get this notch to face forward. Stick it down. All right. Got a little plastic thing to stick over my rod bolt there. Crank throws at the bottom of its travel. Okay, get that to make sure that this is flush. All right, let's try to see if we can smack it down now. She's in. All right, now we dive back underneath, get that rod cap on there. Okay, I've been struggling for a long time. I'm down to the last two rod bearings. I'm gonna bring the one and two crank throw down to the bottom. Where I can get out the... So it is a tedious, arduous process getting these new bearing shells in here. I grease them up, I put them up in place, put lithium grease on them. Then I pull, carefully pull the rod back down over the crank throw and then stick the rod cap on. And uh, you gotta be careful, you wanna nick that crank. If you nick that crank, you better have some focus cloth or something handy. <laughs> It's not advisable to nick the crank if you can help it. These little rod nuts, you gotta be careful when they touch, it doesn't take much. If you can hear that, it doesn't take much if you force them to nick that crank. So you gotta be careful. Alright, let's button up these last two rods, torque them down, and then we'll call it a night because it's long after dark now. All right, getting right back at it. Here's the new oil pan I popped for from Summit. Extra 40 bucks, but just a cad plated stock replica. Only in 75 and lighter style, it uses this thick front seal as opposed to the thin seal that my old gasket, uh, this was used in the old oil pan. So they only make this one piece gasket with the thick style. So I elected and wanted to use this gasket real bad nice one piece so I went ahead and uh, got another pan I figure I'll just use this with the next motor that I build for this thing so that's what I did getting ready to glue all this in place up underneath the van and then slide this in just trying to figure out where I want to put my sealer on this thing and how I'm gonna hold it up in there all right I'm moving along here I've been uh, wrestling with this head Torquing it all down, starting from the center out, and uh, working around all the obstructions took quite a while. Everything's taking a long time. I've got my headers here. I'm uh, looking at this uh, Mr. Gasket uh, Ultra Seal gasket here. It's got the round ports on it, which actually fits better than the square type ports I had on my old gasket. My old white gasket, by the way, which is the cheap one, and lasted many, 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 many years. So even those cheap white gaskets will last you a long time sometimes. The headers haven't given me this much trouble. They've been on this rig for over 20 years. Cheap old Cyclone headers, 49 bucks back in their day. All right. Although I said I wouldn't do it, 
I'm looking at my old Felpro intake gasket. I'm thinking I might want to clean this off and uh, I may just try to use this again. I like these old gaskets so much. Uh, this is my Ultra Torque Mr. Gasket. I always like these form fitted ones over these big fat ones that uh, Mr. Gasket sells. Figured I'd save these for the next motor to go in the old van. So I may be doing that. And I uh, went over to these metal collector gaskets. Real nice. I'll put that back in again. Alrighty then. It's a windy day. Many days have gone by. We'll take a look underneath here. I just got done trying to retorque this pan. I've got that one piece gasket in there and it says steel reinforced uh, around the bolts and so it re required no retorquing. There's my uh, job done here. I filled in that chasm with my right stuff sealer all the way across. I did it in two stages. I did one step, let it set up overnight, didn't start it, laid another layer on until I'd filled that gap in and let that set up. Because I'm paranoid about that thing leaking there after all I've gone through. In my last video, when I started off just changing a camshaft in this thing. So, that's what I've done. And I know a lot of stuff I've done here has been Mickey Mouse. Yeah, but some of it was done 20 years ago and it lasted the test, the test of time. So, some works. Some didn't work so well, but be sure and leave a comment one way or the other or any tips you may have on Mickey Mouse and stuff together to keep it running, especially in this day and age where many of us have more time than money. All right, here we have a selection of tools and uh, some leftover bearings, rings and such, gaskets. Gaskets for next time, we've got one exhaust left intakes I'll use on the next motor when I do this thing. So that's going to be a wrap. So if go ahead and hit the like button if you'd like or not or subscribe and uh, I'll be posting updates and you'll find out if this stuff works or worked in the future.